Bonjour and welcome to this French lesson with me, Jennifer, your French teacher in the south of France. Today we're going to talk about forming questions. Again, we've talked before about forming questions. What are the three ways to form a question in French? Can you remember the three ways of forming a question? First, you have intonation. You also can form a question using que? And you can form the third way of forming a question is by using simple inversion where you take the subject and the verb, you flip them around and you hook them together with a hyphen. Those are the three basic ways to ask a question in French and you'll usually just elicit a yes or no answer. But what if you want more information than just a simple yes, no, or maybe? What if you really need to know who, what, when, where, why, how, come, uh, how, how much, which, those kind of things. I'm going to tell you how to say those words in French and it's very important according to the kind of question you want to form, you need to know where to put that question word in the sentence. So here we go. Let's start out with just a quick reminder of how to say those question words. So the first one is who and that's key. What, you have three different ways that you can say what in French. Quoi? Que, and sometimes even quel can mean what. Quel also can mean which, and it just depends on the verb that's following it, and I'll give you some examples in a little while. When is quand, where is où, how is comment, how much or how many is combien, uh, yeah, so I think I got all of them. All right, so if you want to put those question words into your question, we'll begin with intonation. How would you do that? Why do I begin with intonation? Because it's the easiest way to ask a question in French. All you have to do is change the tone of your voice. So if you wanted to say something like, is Jules going to the store? Jules va au magasin? So you see, you just take that simple statement, Jules va au magasin. You change the tone of your voice, Jules va au magasin. If you want to add a question word to a question that has been formed using intonation, you're going to want to put that question word somewhere other than at the very beginning of the sentence. I hesitate to say at the end of the sentence because sometimes it might fall in the middle and that's perfectly fine. So if you wanted to say, why is Jules going to the store? You would just say, Jules va au magasin, pourquoi? You see, so in that case, the pourquoi just comes at the end of the sentence. If I wanted to ask the same exact question using est-ce que, I have to take the question word, pourquoi, and put it at the beginning of the sentence. So it turns out to look like this. Pourquoi est-ce que Jules va au magasin? Literally, why is it that Jules is going to the store? If I wanted to use inversion, remember that just flipping around the subject and the verb, something a little tricky happens that you need to remember in French. I'm not saying il va au magasin, I'm saying Jules va au magasin, right? If I were just saying il va au magasin, then I would flip around the il, and the va, and I would say, va-t-il au magasin? Just a little reminder, when you're using inversion and you have a situation like that, il, elle, or on, plus a verb, and you need to invert it, you can't say, va-il au magasin. It sounds too choppy. So you have to incorporate a hyphen, t, hyphen, in between the il and the va to make it sound right. So, va-t-il au magasin? That's just a little review. Now, if you want to add a question word to that, just like with esque, you're going to take your question word and put it at the beginning of the sentence. So, pourquoi va-t-il au magasin? Now, what if I wanted to say, why is Jules going to the store, instead of just, why is he going to the store? Something important to remember when you're talking about inversion is that you can only invert verbs with subject pronouns. So the subject pronouns are je, tu, il, elle, on, nous, vous, il, and elle. As soon as I have a noun subject, so in this case that noun subject is Jules, here's what I have to do. Pourquoi Jules va-t-il au magasin? 
So it becomes very repetitive. Why do I have to say Jules and il in the same sentence? For the simple reason that you cannot invert a noun subject and a verb. So you have to say it twice. Pourquoi Jules va-t-il au magasin? So let's take another example. What if I say, les enfants vont à l'école? What does that mean? The children are going to school. That's the verb aller. Les enfants vont à l'école. I want to turn it into a question using intonation. Les enfants vont à l'école? And what if I wanted to add a question word? How about comment? Comment. Remember, that means how. So what I'm really wanting to ask is, how are the kids going to school? It means, you know, are they walking? Are they taking their bike? Are they taking the bus? Are we bringing them by the, with the car? So I would say, using intonation, les enfants vont à l'école comment? Remembering all the time that you have to take the question word when you're using intonation and put it somewhere other than at the beginning of the sentence. If I wanted to ask the same question using est-ce que, I'm going to take my comment, or whatever question word it is I want to use, and I'm going to put it at the beginning of the sentence. Comment est-ce que les enfants vont à l'école? It means exactly the same thing as when we said it using, in, uh, using intonation. It's just a different kind of question. So est-ce que and inversion are definitely going to be, uh, I hesitate to say formal, but they're going to be more correct, all right? Uh, the intonation is the easiest. It's probably one of the most common but it's not technically the most correct, all right? I have to tell you, though, because that's how people speak. Now, if I wanted to ask the same question, how are the kids going to school, using inversion, remember I'm going to flip around my subject pronoun and the verb. What is the subject pronoun if you wanted to replace les enfants with the subject pronoun? That's right, it would be il, I-L-S, plural, because we're assuming that the children it's a mixed group, boys and girls, all right? So I would say, comment les enfants vont-ils à l'école? So the vont-ils, you already have V-O-N-T, so you already have that T sound. You don't have to add another hyphen, T hyphen. That only happens with the il, elle, un singular, all right? So comment les enfants vont-ils à l'école? I have to say, les enfants vont-ils, because remember that I cannot invert a noun subject, in this case, les enfants, and the verb. I have to be repetitive. Pourquoi or comment les enfants vont-ils à l'école? Great. So let's, let's ask you this real quick. If you're asking a question using intonation, where is your question word going to go in the sentence? Somewhere other than that, the beginning. And if you're using est-ce que, where is it going to go? That's right. It will go at the beginning of the sentence. And with inversion, where are you going to put your question word? Always at the beginning of the sentence. Super. All right. So let's get back to what. How do you say what in French? I told you that there are three ways that you can say what, depending on the kind of question you're asking, and sometimes depending on the verb that's following the question word. So if we wanted to ask uh, a question like, what are you buying at the store? What's the verb to buy? Acheter. So if I want to ask that question using intonation, I would say, tu achètes quoi au magasin? So I use quoi, Q-U-O-I. It's not coming at the beginning of the sentence. It's not at the end. It's, in this case, somewhere in the middle, okay? Tu achètes quoi au magasin? If I wanted to ask the same question using est-ce que, we know that the question word has to come at the beginning of the sentence. So here's the deal about quoi. Quoi can never come at the beginning of the sentence. It would be incorrect, so you have to use a different form of the word what. And in this case, it's que, Q-U-E. So I would say, qu'est-ce que tu achètes au magasin? Now what happens to my Q-U-E? I don't say que est-ce que tu achètes au magasin. I say qu'est-ce que. So the Q-U-E becomes Q-U apostrophe because it's followed by an E. D'accord? It's 
followed by a vowel, basically. So, qu'est-ce que tu achètes au magasin? If I want to ask the same question using inversion, I'm going to invert the tu and the achète, so it will become achète tu, and I'm going to put my question word in the beginning of the sentence. We know that quoi cannot come at the beginning, it has to be que, so I say qu'achètes tu au magasin. Again, the que, Q-U-E, becomes Q-U apostrophe because in this case, it's followed by a vowel, achète. Qu'achètes-tu au magasin? What about quel? I mentioned that sometimes quel can mean what. And quel means what when it's followed by the verb être. Être. So we've talked about the verb être before. So I can say something like, quel est votre magasin préféré? What is your favorite store? Quel est means what. Sometimes quel means which. So if I wanted to say which store do you prefer, then I say quel magasin préfères-tu? Or quel magasin est-ce que tu préfères? D'accord? Remember that quel technically is an adjective. So that means it has to agree in gender and number with the noun that it's describing. So that's why when you see the example I wrote, quel magasin préfères-tu? I wrote quel, Q-U-E-L. Pourquoi? Because magasin is a masculine singular noun. If I wanted to say quel magasin préfères-tu? And it sounds just the same, but you see the way I've written it, I've got an S on magasin which means it's now a plural noun. That means I also have to add an S to quel, so it becomes Q-U-E-L-S. Quel magasin préfères-tu? Which stores do you prefer? Voila. Okay, I hope that this has been helpful to you. You can download the PDF that I've made available to you. All of the question words are written there, all of the rules, placement, different kinds of questions. It's all there for you along with the examples that I've talked about in this lesson. And there's also an exercise for you to test your knowledge. And that's always a good idea. Remember that if you have learned something from this lesson, I'll really appreciate it if you will share it, if you'll write your comments for others to see. And if you want to take your learning of French a step further, you can always take online French lessons with me directly on Skype. Your teacher, Jennifer, in the south of France. I'm here for you. Ask me any questions you have. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. A bientôt.